UTMB, 20 ans de passion. My name is Mathilde Lenné. I'm a volunteer for the UTMB Mont Blanc, and on the occasion of the 20th edition of the race, I met with the people that contributed to the legend. Rory Bozio made history at the 2013 UTMB when she finished in the top 10 overall and became the first woman ever to accomplish this feat. Not only that, the 29 years old nurse also crushed the women's record by over two hours. But she was just getting started and the following year she did it again. She returned to the race to win it. Two UTMBs back to back. Now, 10 years later, you can still see stars in her eyes when she talks about UTMB. The American runner is always keen to revisit the race that turned her into a legend. Hi, Rory. Ah, bonjour, Mathilde. Should we do the interview in French? Are you okay? No, the only things I know in French are the bad words and insults. Okay, so, so yeah, <laughs> let's stick in over. English. I'm very happy to catch up with you and we have a lot to talk about. But right before digging in, can you share your absolute favorite memory related to UTMB? The moment you will never forget. Um, the one that like particularly sticks in my brain is in um, 2013, I um, it was like the Col de Foray section out of Cormayer and um, halfway up the climb, my headlamp had stopped working. And so I reached in my bag for the second dairy headlamp. And um, I hadn't realized that it had been turned on while it was in my bag. So it was dead also. So now I'm kind of in a little bit of a panic because I think at that point it was probably 3.30 or 4 in the morning. So it was still very dark out and I'm getting to the top of the climb. And so I had to pull out my iPhone and use the flashlight on the iPhone. <laughs> and I was just holding it in my hand and up there. It was very like foggy and a lot of mist. So it was really difficult to see. No one was around me to, you know, work with um, to maybe get some light from. But, you know, I just had to go a little bit slower and the iPhone headlight uh, flashlight did work. And then as the kind of night wore on, maybe about like a half hour later or something, um, the dawn started and the sun started to rise. And it was just as you're kind of descending into Switzerland there, it was just the most like magical sunrise. I can still picture it in my brain. Just the colors were just like all these pinks and oranges. And there were some clouds in the sky and the mist was parting. And it was like all of a sudden it just as you're descending, the view opened up into the valley below you. And it just had this very um, magical quality, you know, and there's like cows around and the little cowbells are going. But I was all by myself. There weren't any other runners around. So it just had this very Um, I felt, I felt very alone, but in that way that feels really good. Like, like it's something that's all yours, you know, and it just, it really felt so special to me. And I still think about that. Um, and it was just so beautiful and lovely and serene. And that's how I like to like think back on UTMB because so many parts of the course feel that way to me. They just have this very special, like ethereal quality to them. So that's probably my best memory. Oh, yeah. you make a really good transition with your souvenir, since um, Ultra Trail is often described as an inner journey. Do you agree with that? 
I think that that's really kind of the essence of it and what it's all about. And of course, you know, UTMB over the years has really evolved into this very um, competitive race where some of the best runners in the world show up and it has this prestige to it. But for me, the reason for doing it was always um, because I wanted to have that kind of personal adventure. And it was just something that was really special to me. And the competitive aspect of it wasn't necessarily the draw or the reason to do it. Um, It was definitely more because I wanted to experience the trail. And I think for a lot of runners... um, you know, especially for people who are going to the race, you know, and they don't expect to be on the podium or whatever, that's the majority of the runners there. It's definitely for the personal experience and to go out and experience um, that trail. And it's a very, you know, it's it's your experience that you're having. And do you remember your first ever race? Uh-huh. I, I started um, racing a uh, like cross country trail mm-hmm. in uh, middle school. So that would be probably around uh like 10 or 11 years old and um it was probably like only a three kilometer race and I don't think I did well but I remember finishing and like feeling exhausted but at the same time thinking oh I really liked that and like I want to go back and do it again and get better at it you know so yeah I, I I liked it from the beginning I think and did you try other sports when you were young Um, I grew up in the Lake Tahoe area and here um, we have Lake Chamonix. Um, We have like four seasons, you know, so you grow up um, doing all sorts of a variety of sports. So I was downhill skiing and um, biking and hiking and, um, you know, playing in the lake. Um, The first the first sport I had ever competed in was uh, downhill ski racing was my first, you know, and I started doing that from a young age. I think my first race was probably like five years old. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if I understand well, you've always been an outdoor lover, but you could have just enjoyed running in the trail alone. Is there something that pushed you to compete? I found that I kind of had a knack for ultra running. And of course, when you do well at something, it kind of like reinforces that you want to keep doing it, you know, cause like everyone likes to do well. Um, So I think just by kind of luck of genetics or whatever and having this predisposition to endurance events that kept me in the sport, Um, but I don't think I ever felt that like super competitive drive um, as during my ultra running career. Of course, like during a race, when you're in it, you know, you do feel that competitiveness and you don't want to lose, but I think I'm one of those people who... You know, of course, I love to win and to do well, but if I didn't do well in a race, it never bummed me out that much. I always thought like, well, there's another race, you know, in a couple months and it's fine and it's just running. And that's not the primary reason that I got into ultra running. It was more as a personal challenge, which I think a lot of people get into it that way. Um, And that's kind of how I always viewed it. It was just like something I wanted to accomplish for myself and not necessarily for the, the comparison to others. I mean... When and how did you hear for the first time about the UTMB race? I think I did my first ultra race in 2007. So even back then, it was a much different sport. Um, A lot smaller, but UTMB was going on. And as I got more into the sport, um, I remember reading about Lizzie Hawker. And I found her to be so inspirational. And I actually did like one race with her and I was just so awestruck. I mean, she beat me by miles. Um, (laughs) She had already won UTMB probably like five times or something. Probably this was probably like 2010. I just, I got it in my brain um, and I saw pictures of the race and it's like, how can you not want how can you not be drawn to go do that race you know and just seeing that like it was lizzie's favorite race really kind of got me inspired to go over and do it and i came over and did my first race at utmb in 2012 and i was just in love i was hooked yeah (laughs) you first lined up as you said uh in 2012 uh you were working 
uh, as a nurse at that time. Yes. Uh, how did you prepare for such a race when you're working? Um, I don't think I was completely prepared for the race mm -hmm. in 2012. Um, as much as I would have liked to have been because of my work schedule, you know, I still was working full time. Um, so I did a lot of just training in my backyard in the Sierra mountains and things. And then when I came over and did that race, I realized, um, that it would be such a huge advantage to be able to train in the Alps and train in the Chamonix area for like the entire summer leading up to the race. Like that would be great. So, um, that's what I ended up doing the next year. Um, my, um, manager at work, let me take some time off of work to come over. But so I don't think I was as well prepared as I wanted to be for the 2012 race, but I still had a lot of fun doing it. Um, and I definitely, it definitely gave me that, that desire to want to come back and be better prepared for it. You seem to have a kind of no pressure approach to training. I've read that you rarely wore a watch and almost never kept track of your mileage. Is that true? Yes, it is true. And I don't necessarily recommend it for other <laughs> runners, but I found when I first got into the sport, I was wearing a like GPS watch and a heart rate monitor. And it just created a lot of, it was good in the beginning to kind of learn your body and learn what pacing is like. But after I kind of got the hang of it, I found it to be very distracting. Overall, I just found that I do better Um, when I have a more relaxed approach and when I can still view it as something that I'm doing for myself and not for just the reason to compete. So that's why I took that approach. You know, I probably would have done better in some races with a more uh, like structured and scientific approach. But I also don't think I would have had the same longevity. And I think I, for me, I would have burned out yeah. quicker with that type of training because um, it just seemed too structured and too rigid and it kind of took the fun away for me. So it was kind of a balance of figuring out what would work. But yeah. That, that was your balance, actually. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But that kind of training um, didn't stop you from finishing fourth on this first participation. Um, but the race was also shortened this year, this specific year because of the snow. Um, what kind of souvenir did you keep from this race? Uh, I, I think I, I personally loved that race. I know some of the other runners were kind of, you know, disappointed that we didn't do the whole loop and that a lot of it, part of it took place at night. But for me, I think I really thrive in kind of the more adverse conditions. And it definitely makes it seem less like a race and more just like a general challenge and kind of like crazy adventure that you're going on. Um, and I can remember at one point, like going over some pass and the snow was pretty deep. Like it was not quite up to my knees, but maybe like halfway up my calves, you know, And I loved it. I thought, this is so cool. Like, here it is, like, end of August, and I'm trampling around in the snow in the Alps, competing in some huge race. And um, it was my first time racing internationally, and uh, I just loved it. I thought it was super fun. And I was really... Um, I really loved like the energy and the atmosphere of the race and how many spectators still came out when it was like th that such crappy conditions, oh, you know, yeah. that it didn't hurt. Yeah, it didn't deter those those tough people in the Alps from coming out to spectate. So it was like really invigorating um, and feeding off of that energy was super cool. And it just made me want to come back and, com you know, hopefully do the entire loop the next year. And, and that's what you did. Because you, you came back yes. in 2013 and you finished first woman, seven overall. Uh, and you were the first woman finishing under the 23 hours, if I remember well. Um, uh, did you expect to win? What was your mindset? Oh, God. No. no, I did not expect to win. My goal for going into the race was just to finish it and hopefully like finish it feeling like I had a really good race and that I raced smart and that I left it all out there, but that, you know, I, I enjoyed myself through all of kind of the pain and discomfort that you go through. And I had never done at that point, that was the most 
challenging race that I had ever done. So it was kind of um, uncharted territory for me. And I didn't know I was I was pretty intimidated and a little nervous going into the race, just not knowing if I could complete Mm -hmm. the whole thing because I had been over in Chamonix for probably six weeks before the event, um, training and getting to know the trails over there. And which is a good thing and a bad thing because, you know, you get used to the terrain, but you also know how brutal it can be and how difficult it could be. And on some of my longer training runs, I would just think, oh my gosh, like I, I have to go run three times the, the distance that I just did, you know? Um, so no, I did not. Uh, I was very surprised, um, to win. Um, I was just really happy that, you know, I, set out and I had such a fantastic time and I felt very, I felt like the, the preparation I had done for the race really paid off. And I was, um, very, very pleased with that. Mm -hmm. And what did you feel when you crossed the line? I honestly couldn't believe that like I had made it all the way around and felt pretty good. And I felt like I had, um, done a, a good job of pacing myself And, um, I had like dug deep in my mind to, to finish the last climb. And I was kind of just shocked that it went as well as it did, that I didn't feel completely, um, destroyed by the race at the end. I mean, of course I was super tired, but, um, I was just, I was, I was, I was kind of in shock that it had, it had gone as well as it went. (laughs) And you also shocked the boys club because you were... (laughs) You were the first woman to uh, to enter the top 10 in UTMB yeah. histories. I guess it felt good too. I, I would be lying if I said as a woman, it doesn't feel good to, to beat the men. You know, it definitely does. Um, you know, it just, I think for me more than anything, it brings a uh, legitimacy to women's running. When you see the women competing on par and at a level with men, I think in general, it raises, uh, like the awareness of, you know, how great a lot of the women are becoming in the sport. And, um, like I'm a feminist, I'm always happy to like show, you know, that women can, you know, compete on a level with men. So in that sense, it was, um, yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> Great to hear. Um, and you came back uh, in 2014 to win again. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. was it a very different race? How do, yeah, if you, if you have to compare both of them, how do you, how would you describe it? I think it was different in the sense that I definitely felt like the external pressure or expectation that, you know, I had done well the year before, and now you have more attention on you and more eyes on you, and you can't help but feel um, that external pressure. And I try not to put too much like internal pressure on myself because I just know personally that I don't do as well when I do that. And if I can keep the kind of um, lighter approach and the mindset of just going out and running my own race and not focusing on others in the competition, I knew I would do well, but it's really hard to block out that noise and that hype um, surrounding. So I tried to really approach it in the similar mindset that I did the year before. Um, But I remember still loving that experience. Um, Yeah, it was really great. Yeah. And did you, did you have in mind at that moment that it clearly um, put your name on the top of your trail running um, kind of history or maybe just the UTMB one, but uh, it's, it's not that usual for a woman at that time to win two races uh, one after the other. You sp- spoke about Lizzie, but it was still a kind of uh, exception. Um, what did you felt about that uh, achievement? Yes. I, um, I always get a little uncomfortable uh, thinking about like placing myself in that type of echelon or having my name said in the same sentence with like Lizzie and some of these eight other great female runners out there. I do still have that feeling of having a little bit of imposter syndrome and um, like, I don't necessarily, like I, it, it doesn't feel right to me to be <laughs> um, spoken about like that. Um, 
but you know, it's really, it's an honor of course, um, to hear people like being so complimentary to you. Um, but it's not like when I look back on my experiences at UTMB, it's definitely not the like winning that made it feel so special. Um, it's really just like having those moments out on the trail and feeling like, you had a good race, not because of where you finished, but because you pushed your body to the maximum. That's to me, what is the most like satisfying part about ultra running is just seeing what you're capable of and kind of pushing past that boundary in your mind of, of what you thought you could do. I think that's really the most satisfying and fulfilling part of, of ultra running. And to me, I can always justify in my mind, like, placing well because, you know, maybe somebody else didn't have a good race and, you know, I got a little bit of luck and whatnot. So I feel more proud of myself for just knowing that, like, I really truly tried my hardest. Yeah. And you said that you are kind of a feminist. Um, that's true that you are an inspiration for a lot of uh, feminine athletes. Uh, what, um, how does it make you feel? Uh, that part I'm like, I'm, I'm proud of because I just feel that for so many years, ultra running was, um, so much of the focus, like the media focus and the spectator focus has been on the men's races because they have been more competitive and there's obviously so many more men that compete in the sport. So any attention, um, that I can bring to how incredible, like the women are doing, I, I feel happy about. Um, just because I do think it's one of these sports that you see a little more parity between the men and the women, like the longer the distance, it seems like the less gap there is between the sexes. And I think that's really cool. And I think just because in general, athletics are so male dominated, especially in the media, just in general across all sports that like any attention that can be brought to what women are doing, I find like, I think that's awesome. Yeah, I, I... 100% agree on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But is it true that you wrote a letter to UTMB people to, um, because you, you were a bit disappointed that there were only the first five women on the podium when there were the 10 first men? Uh, yes, that is true. I was, I was disappointed with that. Um, just because I knew that like, You know, I, I thought that the top 10 women deserve to be recognized just like the top 10 men did. Um, and I'm very happy that that has since been amended for many years now. And I think that we've seen the results of that are that like the women's field just continues to become more and more competitive. And you see the caliber of female runners just continuing to excel and the races are getting more and more competitive among the women and there's less gap. There's like less of a time gap between first and 10th. Yep. Um, I think that's really cool. And I think that speaks to that, like the more attention and focus that you can bring to these races and for like how the female, the women are doing in the race, the more you're going to attract other women to the sport and the more you're going to grow the sport. Um, and I think overall that's just super important. You know, when younger women can see like, Oh, I, there's people like me competing in this sport and doing well, it attracts them to the sport. Um, and I think overall that's, that's really awesome. Yeah. And, um, do you, do you have any advice for a woman who wants to start running? Yeah, just go out and do it. I think you'll surprise yourself at how capable you are. Like you just have to make the first step and like go out and try it. And you'll really, I mean, I surprised myself. I thought it was going to just be, before I did my first hundred mile race, I thought it was just going to be a torture fest, you know, and I was going to hate it, but it was just something that I wanted to do to prove to myself that I'm tough. And I ended up loving it and finding it to be such a gratifying experience and something that can Can really bring you a lot of confidence because you realize how capable you are. So I would definitely, and it's super fun. And, you know, there's like, it's such a great way to meet people and to create really great friendships. Some of my best girlfriends are women that I met because of ultra running. And we spent so many, like, like Fernanda Maciel and um, Martina Vilma, like, it's just, you just, the bonds that you create going out on a really long run with your friends are really incredible. 
um, you know, and they last a lifetime. So I definitely think it's an awesome sport to get into. Uh, would you say that this sport and maybe the UTMB changed something in your life? Uh, definitely. I, um, I'm so grateful for the experiences that I've had at UTMB and the periods in the summer, like leading up to the race and the people I got, mostly like the people I got to meet um, and just the experience overall of participating in such an amazing event where you're just surrounded by all of this, like really intense passion and energy. And it's something that's like such a unique thing to, to live through. And, uh, it brought a lot of, um, satisfaction to me and uh the friendships that i made from doing utmb and ultra running in general are really incredible and um you know it like you know brought it gave me a sense of like confidence and accomplishment and um yeah it's i'm so happy that i you know got into this sport it's been one of the more rewarding aspects of my life for sure We haven't seen you there uh, since 2019, and you're yes. in your eighth place. We're missing you. Yeah. Uh, what are you up at the moment? Yeah, I, I mean, I would love to come back and either like volunteer or support some friends doing the race. I can see myself. I still always joked with, uh, not joked, but um, with Fernanda, I always told her that I wanted to do PTL with her. Oh. And she said when we're like... <laughs> what an amazing I'm team it will be on this race. <laughs> I told her I would hold her to that. So I, I think I have her on video saying that when our we're when we're in our fifties we can do PTL together. Um so that might be the next one I do. But you know, I never say never and maybe some point down the line I'll come back and compete. It's just not um not for me right now. Like there's other life stuff that unfortunately got in the way, but I, I miss it. I miss yeah. I miss that year and just being there at the end of August. It's just, it's infectious and it's such, um, it's such a magnetic place for me. I feel very drawn to it. So, um, so someday I'll be back. Yeah. But yeah. Do you have any personal like, challenge that you could share or want to share if you don't have? I I'm currently pregnant, so I'm 20 oh. weeks pregnant. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that will be, I think, uh, the probably biggest oh, challenge sure. yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully in the future, I'll be back to Chamonix mm -hmm. with a little little baby on my back. Um, but, uh, I mean, I would love to show my child um, the Chamonix area and just introduce them to the, to the you know, magnificent way of life over there, I think would be incredible. So, yeah, that's kind of on my, that's, taking up enough uh yeah an energy it's kind of personal challenge it's yeah. a kind of personal challenge <laughs> i can understand yeah really really well yeah uh rory we have reached the end of this interview thank you for your time take care of yourself i will be really glad to see you in chamonix uh, when you'll be back there yes for sure. me too and much for the opportunity to share a little bit about my experiences at UTMB. It holds such a like special place in my heart. So I'm always honored to get included in this type of stuff. So I really appreciate it. So, so it's a, it's a shared feeling. So thanks for everything and yeah. talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Bye. Ciao. We've reached the end of this week's episode. Once again, I want to thank Robri Bozio for her energy and enthusiasm. She reminded us all of how important it is to enjoy what you do in any situation. Cet épisode a été produit par Lines Agency et Trail Endurance Mag. Il a été réalisé par Mathilde Lenné et Mélanie Poil. Vous pouvez nous écouter tout l'été et découvrir ou redécouvrir le mythe UTMB. Si vous avez aimé cet épisode, n'hésitez pas à vous abonner au podcast et à mettre des étoiles sur les plateformes d'écoute. On attend aussi vos commentaires sur l'Instagram de l'UTMB Montblanc et sur celui de l'UTMB World Series.